Hey, how's it going? It's me. I'm I'm still here. Uh, it's uh, time lapse an hour or two. I've rendered my past video, rendered my past video to pieces. Um, still wearing the same cram shirt. I let my hair down, and now it's time to talk about the cassette tag 2023. <laughs> I figured this topic needed some love, and I really like tapes. I've always really liked tapes. I'm not a tapes-only weirdo, because that's that's real weird. Um, they they are kind of an inferior format, but I've always had kind of a, you know, I think I've talked about it plenty of times, a kind of a nostalgic attachment to cassettes, um, like a lot of a lot of people do. Uh, so there's a tape tag going around. I have it on my phone here. I'll be reading it off. Uh, new friend, low noise, Jason Skills. This is him. I'm gonna put his picture here. Editing. Jason Skills. He told me about it. Um, check out his channel. It's pretty cool. I like his uh, selections for his tape tag. I'm gonna probably do the metal tag and possibly the vinyl tag too, just because it's pretty easy to, to kind of snap these off and um, shoot them, and they're generally pretty interesting and people watch them and stuff. But I thought I'd do the cassette one because uh, that'd be the most fun for me. And it's all about me. So, there's 20. 20 selections here. Got them all in order, all organized, ready to go. Let's get started. Before that, though, real quick, should mention what we're listening to. <clears throat> Plow United, Good Night Sellout. <laughs> what a more 90s title than Good Night Sellout, right? This was a, a band from, I believe, Pennsylvania. They sound like they're from Berkeley or uh, California a little bit. Um, also kind of sound like a veil, but really fast. I like this era of like kind of melodic. I mean, at the time it might have been considered pop punk. I don't know, uh, but there are these bands, especially, especially on the East Coast, actually, like um, I Farm and the Disenchanted, who had elements of melodic punk, uh, but were a little bit rougher about it. And that's what this kind of reminds me of. It's kind of like Bouncing Souls, kind of like a Veil, but really fast. Um, I don't listen to stuff like this as often as I used to. I was really into a, a lot of stuff like this senior year of high school and the first year out, out of high school, and then I got into crust and stuff. But I, uh, I'll i make time once in a while for a really good band. And a friend of mine who uh, played in a very good band called the No Johns that were pretty similar to the style in the 2000s recommended this to me. I saw it for eight or nine bucks at Nice Price Records in uh, Raleigh, so I picked it up and not disappointed. A lot of, a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, a little change of pace there, a little non-metal selection while we go through these 20 tags of tapes, tape tags, tap, tappy tube, tarp. Okay, let's go. Uh, number one, a tape from 2022. This was on one of my lists for, uh, you know, favorite releases, but, you know, I didn't see it get mentioned much for metal, so I thought I'd throw it out there again. That's the Ecstasis. EP, Paralyzing Impermanence, on Unspeakable Acts. You know, it's just three songs and uh, and a Morgoth cover, but it's just really great, kind of thrashy death metal. Brings to mind a lot of European influences, but isn't a worship band or aping any particular sound. Very much of its own. I think I said all that last time, but you should definitely check it out. It's great. Number two, a punk or new wave tape. Uh, pretty much the only record I've really gotten into by no means no. Uh, a friend of mine in high school taped this for me. I know Wrong is a classic and they've got a lot of good records, but Small Parts Isolated and Destroyed, which also contains the Day Everything Became Nothing EP. Canadian, uh, really weird, kind of art punk on uh, Alternative Tentacles. 
They're around the 80s, well into the 90s. Lots of like really cool, fancy base work. White shell there. Gotta love the uh, Alternative Tentacles logo. It's one hell of a J card. Big fold out there. Yeah, love No Means No, this record specifically. At some point, I'll probably give them the treatment, check out more stuff, but this this album's perfect for me. Alright. A metal or hard rock tape. Another one that I feel deserves more love. King Horse, self-titled. Um, I'm going to try to be brief with talking about these, because there's a lot of them. But man, Louisville, Kentucky, hard rocking metal with a, a real, like, hardcore punk spirit. Riffs, um, kind of croony, sort of Danzig-esque vocalist. Uh, Danzig produced this, by the way. Pusshead obviously did the artwork. Um, you know, it was very, very unique for its time. I, th I feel like a lot of people who, throughout the 90s, would like the kind of croonier, more rocking stuff that would come along later and become very mainstream, might dig this. The singer was a wild man, though. Um, not just vocally, like, I saw old videos of him going off on stage. Um, and he would occasionally just like screech and shout out and uh, kind of veer from what he was doing with like the, the more melodic side of his vocals. Um, so it's not for everybody, but I really, the King Horse ages like a fine wine to me. I love this band. They were a big influence on the Louisville scene, uh, particularly Endpoint, who are a great hardcore band, later kind of post-hardcore on in their career. Um, just cool, cool. You know, this part almost like the energy of early bad brains but they're really into like black oak arkansas is awesome shit all right Oop, my phone fell asleep um a tape still sealed this is an in the nursery tape that i got as part of a some kind of clearance sale or something from wax tracks like a while ago uh lesprit yeah obviously i forgot that i bought it <laughs> it's just been Sitting in my rack, you know, in the nursery, weird, ambient, uh, soundtracky kind of stuff. Uh, some of their stuff is really kind of dark and disturbing. Uh, not a huge fan, obviously, or I would have listened to this by now, but now that I remember that I have this, <laughs> maybe I'll give it a spin later. Um, most experimental tape. Not big on a lot of experimental stuff, if I'm being honest, uh, but my friend from Syracuse... Chuck did this project, Genetic Infantrymen, that was like a lot of like, uh, sort of martial industrial if I'm remembering right, and like kind of electronic elements to it. Uh, Chuck used to sing for a band called Black Sheep Squadron, lives out in California now, but like a lot of people, um, kind of later on, you expand your musical horizons and he got really into a lot of stuff like Psychic TV and noise and stuff like that and decided to do his own his own project, which is cool. It might be more straightforward than I remember. I haven't spun it in quite a while, but I think it's the most experimental thing I have. Hell, it might be that in the nursery. I don't know. I haven't opened it. Um, a tape from the 80s. She's So Unusual by Cyndi Lauper. What a great record, man. So many hits. Uh, girls Just Want to Have Fun. she -bop. Oh, man. That whole, that whole plot... That whole angle in the WWE with her and Captain Lou leading up to WrestleMania 1. Just a talented lady, great songwriter. Love this album. A hip-hop or R&B tape. De La Soul is dead. Second album, you know, they're kind of... Uh, I'm no expert about this 90s hip-hop stuff, but from what I read and judging by the skits on this and everything, they're kind of dealing with their own fame and this whole way they were kind of painted themselves into a corner with the flowers and the, the kind of hippie and peace sign stuff. And uh, they're kind of trying to do something different on this album. And it's it's a cool, it's a really cool 90s hip-hop record. And that actually came sealed. Um, Paid a little bit more than what you usually pay for a tape, but I was actually surprised. I got a good deal on it, and it sounds great. Nothing like getting new old stock, and it, there's no tape rod or anything, and it works well. A tape you have on CD or vinyl as well. Um, I have a lot of those. <laughs> I happen to have something I call the Three Format Club, which is albums that I love so much I have them on every available format. Uh, one of those is Terrorizer's World Downfall. 
uh, just a perfect grindcore record, you know, with uh, for a session recording, David Vincent, and of course you have uh, Jesse Pintado, later of Napalm Death, Pete Sandoval, who went from Terrorizer to Morbid Angel, and of course Oscar Garcia from the West Coast Nausea. Uh, some of the best riffs, just catchy, and I think the only record where Easy E and Extreme Noise Terror are both thanked. Your most expensive or valuable? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I it's crazy because I have a lot of those early 90s Roadrunner classics, you know, thrash and death metal cassettes, and some of them are probably a lot. I, I'm not sure. I, I've got some Deicide tapes and some other stuff that are probably going for a lot now, and I'm not sure if this would go for what it's going for on Discogs because it is kind of partied on. I got this in a lot a long time ago when before tapes went through the roof. And they were still cheap, like we're talking 2008 or 2009. But I have an original um, Blasphemy Fallen Angel of Doom uh, and Wild Rags. As you can see, it's kind of partied on. But right now there's a copy on Discogs for 59 bucks, And that's just in America. There's one for 71 euros and another one for 80 euros. So, yeah, it's probably my priciest. I'm not sure. I not gonna go too crazy with effort in that department techno or synth okay not a big techno guy um i think i have some others from that wax tracks score that might qualify but it's techno or synth so i thought i'd pull out depeche mode's black celebration uh, not my favorite depeche mode full length that would probably be violator and i really like the early singles too the catching up with depeche mode stuff but i have a bunch of their stuff one of those bands that uh, their releases are still pretty cheap on cassette. If I see them around, you often see them at uh, charity shops. If you want to be British about it, thrift stores, pick them up for a couple of bucks. So I just snagged Depeche Mode tapes. Cool to have. A tape you bought at a show. This was recent. I bought this Benediction Grotesque Ashen Epitaph compilation. Two EPs on one. One's live. Really, really good live recording. I was so stoked to get this. Uh, just a guy was selling tapes at the uh, Medium Well in Hell Fest, Extreme Metal Fest in downtown Raleigh. Also got this. Just want to show it off again. Um, dark is a season. Uh, this appears to be autographed, which is very cool. These were these were like six dollars each or something like that. Great, great pickup at that show. A legitimate definition of a score. An actual score. A tape with a colored shell. This is a reissue of uh, Sky Dancer by Dark Tranquility. Um, not sure why I picked this because it just looks black, but it's actually it's actually very dark blue. It's actually very nice. Yeah, my, my first foray into Dark Tranquility, you know, I was never the biggest mellow death kind of guy, uh, but this is amazing. Amazing record. Will you buy more tapes in 2023? Why or why not? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to cut down on, on needless spending and consumerism and uh, work my way into selling my own stuff more in 2023. So probably not. I, it was a particularly heavy cassette year, 2022. I did buy a lot of tapes. If you caught my last update, I bought a lot of bootlegs on cassette. Um, I'm, I've been making a lot of tapes, been taping vinyl and playing it in my car on, on my Walkman and all this other stuff, so probably not. Um, tapes are just getting more and more expensive all the time, so it'll it'll probably be less. Show an album. Okay, oops. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Will I buy more tapes? Um, what do you play your tapes on? Well, I talked about this extensively couple of updates back talking about my stereo setups and all that stuff um, on the can you be a metalhead and an audio file video I'll put a little uh, a little one of those little link things here you can click on that and check it out I have a couple of different means like I said I have this uh, this Walkman in um, in my car and it's like an old-school Radio Shack Walkman that somebody rewired to have like a DC jack so you don't have to use batteries, which is cool. It's got the little slidey equalizer guy on it. It's really nice. I like that for tapes. I have a, a newer manufactured boombox. It sounds great. Uh, that's a, is it a Sharp? I think. Um, 
in my kitchen. And then I've got like an Akio dual cassette deck. I have a couple of different Walkmans kicking around. I also really like this uh, this Sony Walkman. I can show you that. This is refurbished um, by a company called Retrospect that do a really good job. Um, not cheap, but they they do an excellent job like repairing stuff and refurbishing stuff if you want to shell out for it. It's worth it. Um, okay, show a mixtape or a blank tape. Terror Australis from Simon of Explosive Action fame. Really cool mix of all Australian metal bands. Actual mixtape. Went to the trouble to ship this across the world to me, which I'm extremely, extremely thankful for. Um, it's so rare. I've gotten so many mixtapes over the years. Um, obviously, it's like an antiquated kind of nostalgic thing doing mixtapes nowadays. But a lot of people have made me mixtapes in the past 10, 15 years and have had a complete, like, ass dual cassette deck, and you can tell, and it's almost unlistenable. It's like, why go to all that effort? You know what I mean? Um, however, Simon, as we've seen from his video about his stereo equipment, has really good sounding equipment. Uh, this is just a great who's who of uh, Australian death metal, black metal, all that kind of stuff. So we got. Uh, a Bremelin, Neuropath, Ignivimus, Sun Tzu, Crypt, Ruins, and several more. All, all, every track, a banger. Great mixtape from Simon. Sorry about those notation noises. What are you going to do? Uh, what's next here? An import tape from a country other than your own. That was 13. That was before the will you buy more tapes thing. A little out of sync. It happens. So uh, Jason mentioned Fringe product. They're... Canadian label. Uh, I don't know if they were, I think they were separate from Bonsai. Bonsai is another one that reissued some American stuff in Canada, in Canada, Canada, and then they had their own stuff that they put out. This is Sacrifice Soldiers of Misfortune. I thought this would be a great example of just perfect Canadian thrash, you know, um, giving the Yanks a run for their money, considerably more vicious than the stuff coming out of the Bay Area, most of it anyway. Uh, sadist and insanity notwithstanding sacrifice were awesome just killer 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 canadian thrash metal and this was on fringe product fringe product also reissued some american stuff like dri which jason showed off so real good show an album you would like to have on tape or a tape you want on vinyl um a tape i would like on vinyl i used to have it on vinyl i flipped it because there was a period in my life where i was uh, very like utilitarian with my record collecting. I only wanted to have only bangers, you know, and I think that's a good way to be. I might get my way back to that at some point. Um, but uh, as you know, if you're a fan of the channel, one of my favorite bands is The Accused. If you don't know me, this is your first time seeing me. Hi, I'm Pat. I really like The Accused. <laughs> uh, but their early, their first three records by The Accused are, are perfect. They're great. The rest of what they did throughout the 80s into the 90s is very, very, very good. I happen to like their first three the most. Not to say that their records after that are even mediocre. Like, they're great. They're really, really good. They're better than most thrash metal records. They get a little bit more technical, a little bit more clean sounding. I like the accused at their dirtiest when it's very... Um, very crossover and like fuzzy bass tone and kind of discharge and, and disgusting sounding. Um... Certainly when they tighten things up and get more technical, it's still really good. Blaine's vocals are still awesome. And this is from that era, Grinning Like an Undertaker. All the uh, stuff that was on of that era was on a label called Nasty Mix, which was a hip-hop label out of uh, Seattle that I believe um, Sir Mix-a-Lot was on. He might have even ran it. Not sure which. Um... But this is a good, this is a very good thrash metal record. Um, very, very good album. I would love to have it on 12 inch. I flipped it because it wasn't the best of the best of the accused, but it still fucking rules. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Somebody trade me one. <laughs> somebody, somebody sell me one for a, a non inflated, non ridiculous price. This is a cutout. It's like somebody tried to make like a, like a paper doll out of this apparently, um, which I'm not that stoked on. It's got the hole punch there. But yeah, great. Um, Gaither artwork, of course. The guy who did not all of the accused artwork, but uh, a lot of it. 
great artist up there with Mad Mark Rude and Pusshead for 80s metal and thrash and hardcore art showing eight track or VHS tape. I have a lot of those. Um, I kind of collect music VHS tapes, a lot of concert stuff, a lot of compilations. I don't spend nearly as much time watching them as I should. I just have them on my wall. I do watch them. I have the CRT TV hooked up to my stereo again in the room tour. I showed that off. Um, so I have a lot of these just at my leisure in case I want to sit around like a like some kind of overfed emperor and sip wine and watch video compilations. <laughs> um, anyway, this is a, a Declaration of Independence Century Media compilation. And man, it's a good, it's a who's who of really awesome stuff and some stuff where I'm like, wow, that was that was on that label too, huh? You got Tiamat, Samael. I think some of this is from onward into the 90s, so it may be not the eras of those bands that I like as much, but uh, Tiamat, Samael, The Gathering, Stuck Mojo, Exodus, Nevermore, Strapping Young Lad, Sub-Zero, who are like a metallic hardcore band from New York who are pretty dope, Marauder, Master Killer, that, that's the pick. That's the video on this. That's that's the shit right there. <laughs> uh, Morgoth, Last Laugh, which I think is from Feel Sorry for the Fanatic, which I like that record, but it definitely bummed a lot of people out. I, I don't know. Sounds like killing jokish kind of stuff to me, which I'm totally cool with. Uh, Moonspell, Sentenced, Satyricon, Mother North, another, another really, really dope video. Sundown, don't remember them. A band called Chum. Uh, okay. Turmoil, who I've been really into lately, wasn't into a lot of that like metallic hardcore stompy shit when it was out in the 90s because I was a crusty. But let me tell you, I've been jamming Turmoil and Kiss It Goodbye lately like it's my job. Turmoil featured um, Jim Winters, who played in a lot of really important bands. He kind of was a stand in for Earth Crisis Live a bunch of times and helped them, uh, helped them write Destroy the Machines. He also played in Believer. Um, played in Starkweather, played in Conviction, which might be my favorite band that he was involved in, which is a little bit more straightforward, but still like metallic kind of hardcore stuff. He's just a great guitarist and knows his metal like really, really well. Um, Trouble's Plastic Greenhead is on there. Um, not my favorite era of Trouble, but it's still pretty good. And then some band called Lion's Share. I don't know. But yeah, I have a ton of these like video samplers. I've got like a Victory Records one. I have... The Doomsday News ones, uh, pretty much Death is Only the Beginning, pretty much any of them that I can get my hands on, I, I get. Um, and it's at the point where I have pretty much all of them that I want, so that's cool. Um, and then finally, this one was weird. I guess it's because it's 2023. That's just occurring to me now. It takes me a little, little while to figure things out. Uh, early onset dementia and all that. Uh, show your second or third or 23rd, 2023 uh, tape in your collection. Um, it's weird because I, I have all these different sections to my collection, so I'm like, which one, you know? Since I just showed off bootlegs, which technically is the beginning of my collection, I figured I'd go to the next section over, uh, which it starts with, um, again, this is all viewable on the room tour, but uh, it starts with new punk and hardcore mostly demos and stuff like that and like stuff that's post like late 90s all throughout the 21st century um, punk and hardcore tapes so I grabbed recent release I think this was 2019 or 20 maybe maybe even 21 um, times a flat circle armor some kind of war Florida band real blown out and noisy um, ugly ugly ass hardcore real good there's a bunch of bands from that scene like protocol to play this really damaged sounding like relatively simplistic but destructive as hell hardcore punk it's very good um this is on a lot of lists i feel like for that year but protocol is also really good they may share members i don't know i don't remember um yeah hey so real quick uh i love editing i love the fact that i can do this because i'm a flawed person i knew i'd forget one uh number 20 was a tape from a box set or a dual cassette set. And uh, this is the only one I have. This thing is kind of an albatross because I never know where to put these oddly shaped or 
larger cassettes. It just kind of sits on top of uh, one of my one of my shelves. But it's Funeralium of Throws and Blight on Caligari. Very very good. Just agonizing, long songed, long songed. Yeah, sure. Um, funeral doom stuff. So that's number twenty. And oh, bonus! Show a single. Okay, okay. I forgot to grab a single, but do not worry. I got some singles for you. Okay, Uncle Pat's not gonna let you down. Cusingles, cusingles. Mother. Yep. I uh, don't remember where I ended up with this. I think somebody sent it to me. Uh, when you have friends, or when you're my age, and you have friends that had music collections and are like, oh yeah, I, I don't need to do this anymore. I can listen to music for free. You want some metal tapes? <laughs> this happened to me several times uh, in the past 15 years. I think it was, uh, I think it was my friend Joel um, sent me this. But yeah, the Danzig Mother 93 meat remix live version. And I think that's the, is that the only version on this? Is that the only thing? There's the live version and the 93 remix. So yeah, if you didn't know, um, Danzig One came out in 89, I want to say. And it was, you know, a hit within its own circle. It did pretty well with like metal underground people and people that were fans of his previous projects. People knew Danzig, but he kind of shot himself in the foot because he had music videos, but they involved like killing chickens over naked ladies. And like MTV was like, nah, dog, <laughs> we're good. And then, um, they did that live record thrall demon sweat live which featured like the studio version of mother over live footage and it was huge they were really it was as big as danzig got like they toured with metallica and suicidal tendencies and all that in case you didn't know the history so this is the single from that mother 93 live 93 remix um cool that's my 2023 cassette tag i hope you enjoyed it if you like what you saw you haven't seen my channel before be sure to like subscribe hit the bell you know i'm doing all the i'm saying all the things that a youtuber says uh I'm just trying to get some eyeballs over here all right uh yeah check me out i'm on all the social medias too i'm going to be streaming every monday with other youtubers hopefully other types of creators maybe in the realms of uh, music and podcasting eventually so stay tuned lots more to come Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Skills, for your skills. Bye.